Brakataya Hawa, Brakataya Hawa Shai, Brakataya Hawa, Brakataya Hawa Shai, Brakataya Hawa, Brakataya Hawa Shai. Blessed be the true, holy, powerful, and mighty name of the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, and blessed be the true, holy, powerful, and mighty name of His only begotten Son, Yahweh Shai, our Lord and our Savior, that the Mashanaka by Allah's equipment shall surely give double honors to the elders of Israel, being the apostles and the elders of the great millstone that rule well, and Shalom Wahab Labaki Yashar Yashar which is peace and love to the elect of Israel. Come back at you again with another lesson, Bahar Chakodasha, Amaf, and the Holy Spirit of Truth. And um, the topic of this lesson is, is pretty much just going in on doing what you got to do so that you can be saved. All right, uh, the scriptures say in the book of, um, I'll get it in the book of Deuteronomy. We'll just hop right into it. Uh, Deuteronomy chapter 11, it's like it, chapter 10 and verse 12. It says, and now Israel, what do if the Lord Yahweh thy power require of thee? So the Lord requires of us certain things. That's knowing our heritage. That's knowing that we're the Israelites, the princes of the heavenly father, the sons of Yahweh. There's requirements that come with that. There's a certain way that we have to think. There's a certain way that we have to conduct ourselves. All right. And especially not much more in these last days that we're seeing judgment go out at an all time high. Mm -hmm. we, don't want, we don't want the Lord to be angry at us. We want the Lord to be. Um, we want the Lord to be uh, pleased with us. All right. So let me read that again. Deuteronomy chapter 10 and verse 12. It says, and now. Israel, what do if the Lord Yahweh require of thee, but to fear the Lord thy power, to walk in his ways, and to love him, and to serve the Lord thy power with all thy heart and with all thy soul. So that's what our main focus should be. That's the reason why we're on this earth. All right. To love Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. And what does it mean to love Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai? To keep his commandments. It says to serve the Lord thy power, Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, with all thy heart and with all thy soul. Yahweh Shai said himself that the law hangs upon this and that you love your brother as yourself. And if we do these things, we fulfill the whole law. So if we're doing these things, the Lord will be pleased with us. And if we're doing these things, the Lord will what? In turn, save us, man. So let's go, let's go from there to the book of um, Psalms. Psalms chapter 50, and I'll start at verse, I'll start at verse 8. It says, I will not reprove, I will not reprove thee for thy sacrifices or thy burnt offerings to have been continually before me. I will take no bullock out of thy house, nor he goats out of thy out of thy fold. So this is in the old testament. And Yahweh and, and the Heavenly Father Yahweh is already saying, I'm not dealing with your sacrifices. All right, that's not that's not going to cleanse you from your sins. What cleansed us from our sins is Yahweh Shai. All right, the blood of of the lamb being Yahweh Shai, he's the one that that his blood is the one that cleansed us from our sins, and now we're in debt unto him. We were purchased with the price with uh, of his precious blood. So now in Psalms it says, "Kiss the son, lest he be angry with you." How do you kiss the son? Meaning what? Show show the son love. All right, be obedient on this. Be obedient to the son. Kiss the son, lest he be angry with you and you perish from the way. So if you're not being obedient to the son, if you're not showing the son love, you're going to perish from the way. How do you show the son love? Yahweh Shai said, if you love me, keep my commandments. He said to Peter three times, if you love me, feed my sheep. So these are ways that we show the son love. These are the ways that we kiss the son. Right. It says, I will take no bullock out of thy house, nor he goats out of thy folds. For every beast of the forest is mine and the cattle upon a thousand hills. I know all the fowls of the mountains and the wild beasts of the field are mine. If I were hungry, I would not tell thee, for the world is mine and the fullness thereof. So the Lord is like, I don't need any of that stuff. All right. And he's going to tell us what he's going to accept as an offering. He's going to tell us what he's going to accept as a sacrifice. Of course, it's Yahweh Shai Mashiach first and foremost. All right. But through him, uh, uh, the Lord is, is accepting our sacrifices being what? Our, our own selves. He's accepting our offering being what? The love that we're showing towards his name. OK, it says, if I were hungry, I would not tell thee for the world is mine and the fullness thereof. Will I eat the flesh of bulls or drink the blood of goats? Verse 14, here's the point. It says, offer unto Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai thanksgiving and pay thy vows unto the Most High. So that's what the Lord is looking for. That's what he's asking for from us. He's asking for us to offer unto him thanksgiving. All right. He's asking for, uh, uh, for us to pay our vows. What's our vows? It's the covenant, man. OK, doing what we are asked of. All right, let me jump over to, uh, we're going to jump back to 50, but let me read Psalms 51 and 16. It says, for thou desirest not sacrifice. That's what he's going into in the 50th chapter. He said, I don't need your bullocks. All right, I don't need your goats or your calves. All the fowls are mine. 
All right. He said you don't need any of that. This is what he is asking for from us. All right. Psalms uh, 51 and 16. It says, for thou desirest not sacrifice else. I, I else would I give it. Thou desi delightest not in burnt offering. The sacrifices of Yahweh are a broken spirit, a broken and a contrite heart. O Yahweh, thou will not despise. So that's the sacrifice that Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai is asking us for. In the book of Romans, the 12th chapter, it says, Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Present your body as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai. All right. So let's go back into Psalm chapter 50 and verse 15. It said, uh, I'll read 14 again. It says, Offer unto Yahweh thanksgiving and pay thy vows unto the Most High. So the Lord is saying what he is accepting. He's telling us what he's accepting as a sacrifice. All right. We read it in Psalms 51. We read it in Psalms 50. All right. Psalms 50 it said he wants thanksgiving. He wants us to pay our vows. All right. 51. It says uh, uh, that the sacrifice of the Lord is a broken spirit, a contrite heart. All right. A humble, meek, repentful uh, 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 spirit. OK, so this is Psalms 50 and 15. It says, and call upon me in the day of trouble. I will deliver thee and thou shalt glorify me. All right. So if we're offering unto Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shai, the offering that he is asked of us being a contrite spirit. All right. A repentful heart, a repentful mind, giving thanksgiving, paying our vows, doing doing uh, uh, this work and labor of love. It says it please the most high by the foolishness of preaching. All right. In Luke 13, it says, repent. Let she all likewise perish. So repenting is going to keep us from perishing. All right. And calling upon the name of Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai in the day of trouble. He's going to deliver us if we're doing these things. All right. So let me jump down to Psalm chapter 50 and verse 23. It says, whoso offereth praise glorifieth. No, let me read 22. Psalms 50 and 22. It says, now consider this. Ye that, for, that, ye that forget Yahweh. Lest I tear you in pieces and there be none to deliver. So everyone, all the Israelites, you so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, that's not serving Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. All right. That's not trying to keep his commandments to the best of your abilities. All right. And giving praises to him. Then you're going to be torn in pieces. We read it in Deuteronomy, the 11th chapter, the, the 10th chapter, the 12th verse. It says, Hear Israel what the Lord requireth thee. That you serve him with all your with all your heart and with all your soul. So if you're not serving the Lord, you're gonna perish. But if you also but if you are serving the Lord in truth and in sincerity, he's gonna give you mercy. He's gonna give you deliverance. Alright, this is Psalms 50 and 22. It says, Now consider this, ye that forget Yahweh, slack it. Now consider this, ye that forget Yahweh, lest I tear you in pieces and there be none to deliver. Whoso offereth praise. Glorifieth me and to him that ordereth his conversation aright will I show the salvation of Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. So we have to order our conversation, our conduct, the way we act, the way we move, the way we think, the way we speak. We have to order it aright. And if we do so, the Lord will show us salvation. And how do we order our ways aright? By taking heed to the scriptures. All right, it says all scripture is given for uh, doctrine, uh, for correction, for reproof. And it's profitable. Uh, let me grab that. This is uh, 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 16. It says, All scripture is given by inspiration of Yahweh and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. So this is how we order our conversation aright. By taking heed unto the scriptures. Because all the scriptures is given by inspiration of the Heavenly Father and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, and for instruction in righteousness. Verse 17, it says that the man of Yahweh may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. So let's go from there to the book of 2 Peter. 2 Peter chapter 3 and verse 9. It says, the Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long suffering to us, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. And the only ones that's going to come to repentance is the elect of the nation of Israel. Isaiah 59 and 19, it says, the Redeemer shall come unto Zion, unto them that turn from transgression in Israel. So the Lord is coming to Israel, but not all of Israel, only the ones that turn from their transgressions, which is going to be the elect, the chosen. Two thirds is not going to turn from their transgressions. That's why the Lord said what he said in the book of Luke, the 13th chapter, the third verse. Lest ye repent, ye shall all likewise perish. 
All right, and now is the time to repent. If you don't repent, you're gonna die. If you don't repent, you're gonna perish. And if we go back to that Psalms, if you don't repent, the Lord is gonna tear you in pieces, and there's not gonna be anyone to deliver. All right, so now is the time to repent and to get yourself right, to get yourself in order, to serve. Now is the time to serve Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. All right, in the book of Ecclesiastes, the twelfth chapter, it says, "Serve." It says, "Remember thou the Creator in the days that I you for the either evil days draw not." All right. So now, now is the time to serve him before all hell breaks out loose. And all hell is getting ready to break out loose. Look what's happening in China. All right. Hey, 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 in the beginning of the year, the Chinese, they thought, oh, yeah, in a month from now, we're going to be, we gonna be um, uh, 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 celebrating the Chinese New Year, the most cracking time of the year out there. All right. And now what? They're quarantined. Millions and millions. I believe over like 100 million people quarantined out there, man. All right. Can't, can't lead a state, can't even leave hospitals. They're grabbing people up, throwing them in the hospitals, man. Seeing their own family members drop dead, all right? So on and so forth. And look how fast that happened, all right? That's a thief in the night, okay? So let me read this real fast. It's St. John chapter 9 and verse uh, 4. And this is in the red letter, so Yahweh Shai is speaking. It says, I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day. The night cometh when no man can work. So now is the time to work. Now is the time to serve Yahweh Shai. Now is the time to, serve, uh, uh, to show your faith, to show your belief. All right? Now is the time to get rooted. In the book of Isaiah, it says, Call ye upon the Lord while he is near. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Now is that time because soon he's not going to be found. Soon the doors of repentance is going to be closed and it's not going to be opening. It's not going to be no opening that door. All right. Verse five. It says, as long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. All right. We're the, and we're the, uh, we're the sons of light, as it says in Thessalonians, man. All right. We're the children of light. We're the sons of light. So we got to let our light shine now before darkness comes upon this whole world, man. So let's go back into Second Peter. Chapter 3 and verse 10, it says, But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in the which the heaven shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also, the earth also, and the works that are therein shall be burnt up. And that's gonna be a beautiful day, man, when the Lord cleans this place from, from its filth. In the book of um uh, Ecclesiasticus, Ecclesiasticus Sirach, the 10th chapter says, the physician cut it off the lo a long disease. The long disease is this devil, this Edomite devil, man. All right. He's spreading his philosophies all around the world. You got trannies and homosexuals and, or I should say sodomites. All right. Sodomites all, all, all spreading over pedophilia, bestiality. All right. Uh, uh, chemtrails in the air, fluoride in the water. Everything is defiled under the inhabitants thereof, man. Let me get that scripture in the book of Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 24 in verse 5. It says, the earth also is, def is defiled under the inhabitants thereof. So the earth is fucked up, is jacked up. Why? Because it is devil that's in rulership. Because the, the, it says in the book of um, Job, the ninth chapter says, The earth is given into the hand of the wicked. He covered the faces of the judges thereof. If not, where then who is it? So this earth is, has been given unto the devil. The word devil just means deceiver. And that deceiver is talking about this, this Edomite. All right. The so-called white man. He's the devil that the Bible speaks of. The earth is in his hand. And that's why the earth is defiled. All right. It says, because they have transgressed the laws, changed the ordinance, broken the everlasting covenant. So the earth is in the state that it's in because the laws of the Bible are not being upheld. All right. Not only are, uh, not only are they not being upheld, but every single one of them is being broken uh, uh, intentionally, man. Everything, everything that's written in the scriptures, Esau, Edom goes out his way to make sure he does the opposite. And that's just how he was created, man. He was created to be an adversary. He was created to be adverse, all right? To be against the ways of Yahweh Ba'asham, Yahweh Shai. And that's why the earth is in the state that it's in. And that's why the Lord is, that's one of the reasons why the Lord is bringing swift destruction and judgment upon this place. In the book of Revelations, the Lord said, I will destroy him that destroyeth the earth. All right. And that's why when you read down this chapter, it goes in how the Lord is going to empty this place out and clean the world from his filth. All right. Well, we'll read the next verse. Verse six it says, therefore, have the curse devoured the earth and they that dwell therein are desolate. Therefore, the inhabitants of the earth are burned and few men left. So the Lord is going to let the missiles shoot off, man. All right. His sword is going to be bathed in heaven. and It's going to come down upon Idumia, a.k.a. America all right, and various other parts of the world. And that's how the Lord is going to clean this place from his filth, clean, the, clean this place from the devils that's in rulership, man. 
Back in 2 Peter chapter 3 and verse 11, it says, Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, seeing that the Lord is going to empty this place, See, seeing that the Lord is going to, when I say empty, when you go back into that uh, Isaiah, he says the earth is empty, meaning he's going to, the slain of the Lord shall be many. All right, from one into the earth, even unto the other. It's going to be a lot of death in the book of Sirach, the ninth chapter. says there be many more of them that perish than of them that shall be saved. Matter of fact, Lord willing, we're going to get that after this. This is Second Peter chapter 3 and verse 11. It says, seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of persons ought ye to be in all holy conversation and godliness? So if you want to escape this judgment, you have to move what? In a holy and godly conversation. Holy means to be separate. How do you move uh, uh, holy? Holily, all right, by taking heed to the holy scriptures. How do you how do you move godly, all right, by 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 taking heed to the scriptures? Okay, it says, seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of persons ought she to be in all holy and godly? It's like in all holy conversation and godliness. Verse 12, looking for and hasting unto the coming of the day of Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. So us saying that we can't wait for the downfall of this devil is actually holy. It's actually godly. All right. That's what, because the day of the Lord is synonymous with the end of this world. Matthew 24 chapter, the disciples came to Yahweh Shai privately asking him what shall be the signs of thy coming and the end of the world. So that's godly. That's holy. Looking for the return of the Messiah. And if you're looking for the return of the Messiah, whom the world ignorantly calls Jesus, his real name being Yahweh Shai, you're going to move a certain way. You're going to think. You're going to speak. You're going to act a certain way. Okay? That, that goes back to holy conversation. All right? Godly conversation. That goes back to that Psalms 50. All right, let's read that again. Psalms 50 and 23, it says, Whoso offereth praise glorifieth me, and to him that ordereth his conversation, his conduct, his mannerisms, his actions, right? And, he, and to him that ordered his conversation aright, will I show the salvation of Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. So we have to get ourselves right. So that when the Lord comes, we'll be found worthy in his eyes. All right? To receive salvation. To escape the judgment that's to come. Back in Second Peter chapter 3 and verse 12, it says, looking for and hastening unto the coming of the day of Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai, wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. That's talking about the intercontinental ballistic missiles, uh, 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 the war that's going to take place, the nuclear war that's going to take place. And Lord willing, that takes place this year. And before that war takes place, the microchip has to uh, uh, be implemented, which is the mark of the beast, the hour of temptation that's going to come upon the, uh, come upon the whole world. And as the Lord said in Revelation, the third chapter, because you have kept this word of my patience, I will also keep you from the hour of temptation. All right. So we have to keep this word. Hold fast that already. Uh, uh, hold fast that which ye have already till the Lord comes. He that overcometh and keepeth his works unto the end. The same shall get power over the nations. The same is going to be saved from all this destruction. The same is going to be set on high, man. OK, it says, nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for new heavens and a new earth. This is what we're looking for. All right. We're not looking for nothing else. We're not looking for East. We're not looking for a new president. We don't give a fuck about no damn presidential election. All right. We're not looking for another black president. Look at look at your first so-called black president who was a Hamite and not an Israelite and not our people. Look what he did. The only change he brought was sodomizing the earth. All right. That's the only change he brought. He didn't do nothing for you so-called Negroes, Latinos and Native Americans. There's no man. No man can redeem you. No one can take you from this low estate except for Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shah. He's the one that sold us to the robbers and he's the one that's going to redeem us. And he's only coming to the re redeem the ones that order their way aright. right. All right. That order their conversation aright. right. That's living holy. That's li that li that's uh, uh, having godly and holy conversation. That's repenting from their sins. That's serving them to the best. That's serving him to the best of their ability. Keeping his law, statutes, and commandments to the best of their ability. That's who the Lord is coming to to save, to give salvation. It says, nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for new heavens and a new earth where indwelleth righteousness. We're looking for the kingdom of Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai to be established here upon the earth, and that's when all our problems and all our worries will go away. Here, here, this is not our rest. All right. Literally, man, you can get fucking 10 hours of sleep and still be wake up tired, big ass bags under your eyes, man. You'd be better off getting four hours of sleep. All right. This is literally not our rest. OK, you can't never uh, every you, you get money. It's like it's already gone before you even get to spend it, before you even get to see it, man. Actually, that's how it is. Before you even get your paycheck, they already got their hand in it, man. 
All right. This place is wicked. You should be looking for the downfall of this society. You should be focused on the kingdom of heaven that's at hand. That draw of nigh, salvation draw of nigh, redemption is nearer than we believed. All right, so let's go from there to the book of <clears throat> Second Ezra, the ninth chapter. Uh, I'm going to jump around. The second Ezra chapter 9 and verse 1, it says, He answered me then and said, Measured out of time diligently in itself. How do you measure time? How do you measure the time diligently in itself? By lining up the prophecies with current events. All right. Getting these articles of what's going on in the world today and lining it up with the prophecies. All right. It says, And when thou seest part of the signs past, which I have told thee before, then shalt thou understand that it is this very same time wherein the highest will begin to visit the world which he made. So we're in the times of the heavenly father, Yahweh, sending his only begotten son, Yahweh Shai, to visit this world. And when he comes to visit this world, we got to be ready. All right. In the, in the book of Luke, the 19th chapter, the Lord said, occupy until I come. All right, in Matthew the 25th chapter, it talks about the wise versions and the foolish versions. The wise versions trimmed their lamps. They had oil. The foolish versions didn't get the oil. All right, so therefore, when the bridegroom being Yahweh Shai, when he made his return, only the only the wise uh, uh, versions was ready. So they went in with Yahweh Shai Mashiach. Then the foolish bridegrooms, or so like, and then the foolish versions, they tried to get in. And the Lord said, depart from me, I don't know you. All right, he said the ones that are ready, let me grab that real fast. The ones that were ready were able to go with him. The ones that weren't ready, they got left behind, man. You don't want to get left behind because if you getting left behind, you're going to get burnt. All right. Getting left behind, that's not like, OK, I missed the first bus. I'm going to just wait 30 minutes for the next bus to come. No, getting left behind means you're going to be waiting for a missile to smack you in your fucking face, man. All right. That's how serious this is. So I got to say it like that. All right. Got to say it seriously, man. It's not no joke. It's not no game. All right. Your life is on the line. Salvation is on the line. Uh, where am I going? Matthew the 25th chapter. This is Matthew chapter 25, and I'm going to jump to the point. Matthew chapter 25 and verse 6. It says, And at midnight there was a cry made. Behold, the bridegroom cometh. Go ye out to meet him. And that cry is what? The, the sound of the prophets, man. All right? Cry aloud, spare not, lift up thy voice like a trumpet and show my people their transgressions. The cry is the prophets telling you that Yahweh Shai is on his way. The cry is the prophets telling you that destruction is coming. The trumpet is being blown. All right. Verse seven, it says, then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said unto the wise, give us of your oil for our lamps are gone out. But the wise answered saying, not so. And we see in that a lot of these people don't have no oil. A lot of these other Israelite groups, they don't, they, they, oil, they don't have no oil. Talking about John the Baptist wasn't in the truth. What kind of shit, man? All this, these wayward doctrines that's coming up, that's 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 a sign of lack of oil, man. A oil leak. Okay? It says, um, it says, but the wise answered saying, not so, lest there be not enough for us and you, but go ye rather to them that sell and buy for yourselves. So he said, you have to get your own, big fella. Verse 10, it says, and while they went to buy, the bridegroom came and they that were ready, the bridegroom being Yahweh Shai, the ones that are ready is the ones that's looking for and hastening to the coming of Yahweh Shai Mashiach, the ones that is uh, ordered their conversation aright, okay? Having a holy and godly conversation. Those are the ones that the Lord is going to get. Those are the ones that were ready. Let's read again. Matthew 25 and 10. It says, And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came, and they that were ready went in with him, to the marriage and the door was shut and we got a marriage to get ready for man we know what you got to clean yourself up all right clean yourself up get your garments on make sure there ain't no wrinkles get the lint roller all right check your teeth clean your ears out all right look presentable because the bridegroom is on his way verse 11 we want him to choose us right and the book of um esther uh uh the uh king of Hosseris was a heathen king all right, he had a whole bunch of women and they bathed in oils for a year trying to get ready to present themselves before the king. What's well, the same thing that we got to do? Uh, um, uh, what's the word? Proverbially speaking. All right. We got to we have to be drenched in the oils. All right. The oil being this truth. All right. The oil. And, and that's pretty much this parable. All right. The, the wise ones, they had the oil. The foolish ones, they didn't have the oil. They didn't have the oil. So just imagine it. All right, going uh, tying it back in with that Esther, if, if there was some women that was bathing that whole year, that was bathing in oil, uh, uh, in oils of frankincense and oils of myrrh, all right, for that whole year, getting ready for it to see the king, 
So you know when he seen them, he's like, okay. She was presentable. She looks good. She smells great. I could smell it before I could see it, right? Then there's the other women that came and they wasn't in the oil. Stanky, hair nappy, eye boogers. Like, man, get the hell out. Who the fuck even brought you in here? Who even allowed you to come in here? All right? And that's how the Lord's going to look at two-thirds of our people, man. All right? The ones that, that the ones that even may know that they're Israelites, but they're not taking this truth seriously. Okay? This is the book of Matthew chapter 25 and verse 10. It says, And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came, and they that were ready went in with him to the marriage, and the door was shut. Afterward came also... The other version saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered and said, Verily I say unto you, I know you not. Verse 13, watch therefore, stay on your watch, keep your eyes open. For ye know not, for ye know neither the day nor the hour wherein the Son of Man cometh. We don't know exactly what day he's coming. We don't have it marked on the calendar. All right. Uh, uh, June 7th, 2020 is when the Lord is going to come. So I'm going to make sure I get ready on the 6th. No, we don't know. All right. We don't know. So therefore, we always got to stay ready so you don't have to get ready. So let's go back into that second Ezra chapter nine. And we'll start wrapping it up. Second Ezra chapter nine. And I'm uh, read verse two again. It says, then shalt thou understand that it is the very same time wherein the highest will begin to visit the world which he made. Therefore, when there shall be seen earthquakes and uproars of the people in the world, then shalt thou well under. And we're seeing that earthquakes. Puerto Rico just got hit with thousands of earthquakes. All right, the Bahamas or, or, or Jamaica, those islands down there got hit with earthquakes. And there's always earthquakes. Look it up right now. It's worth the Google. So earthquakes happening every day in different places. Uproars of the people. There's uproars going on all around the world. Riots going on all around the world. And that's still going on to this day. Just because you don't hear too much about it don't mean it's stopped. All right. It's still going on. It's just not covering in the media. Okay. So let me jump down to verse 7. It says, and every one that shall be saved and shall be able to escape by his works and by faith, whereby ye have believed. So this is how you're going to be able to escape these things that's to come. These are this is how you're going to be able to be saved. All right. By your works and by your faith, because the two go hand in hand. You can't have one without the other. OK, it says, whereby ye have believed shall be preserved from the said perils. So the ones that serving Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai. As it said in that Deuteronomy, as a recap, right? We go back to the scripture we started off with. What does the Lord require of you? That you serve Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai with all your soul and with all your heart. All right. The Psalm said, uh, uh, the Psalm said, offer praise unto me and I will save you in the day of trouble. Matter of fact, let's read that Psalms again. Because that's pretty much where the <clears throat> this lesson um, was inspired off of through the spirit of Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai. This is Psalms chapter 50. In verse 23, it says, Whoso offereth praise glorifieth me, and to him that ordered this conversation aright will I show the salvation of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai. Him that ordered his, uh, his conversation aright will be granted salvation. Let's jump up. Psalms 50 and 14. Offer unto Yahweh thanksgiving and pay thy vows unto the Most High. And so if we're doing those things, if we're offering thanksgiving to Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai and paying our vows to Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai, verse 15, and call upon me in the day of trouble, I will deliver thee and thou Thou shalt glorify me. If we do those things, the Lord is going to deliver us, man. Simple point blank. All right? Ain't no fine print. Ain't no reading between the lines. The scriptures say what it says. And the Lord is not a man that he shall not that he shall lie. And he not slack concerning his promise. So when all hell breaks out loose, which clearly is soon to break out loose, all we got to do is call upon Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai. And he's going to hear our prayers and he's going to save us in the time of trouble as long as we've been doing what we're supposed to be doing, man. And as long as we have faith and belief. So back in 2nd Ezra chapter 9 and verse um, 8. It says, shall be preserved from the said perils and shall see my salvation in my land and within my borders. For I have sanctified them for me from the beginning. And at the end of the day, it's all about who the Lord has chosen. Okay. You can't make yourself of the elect and you can't not make yourself of the elect. It all goes back to predestination. But we haven't seen the list of the elect. So therefore, give diligence to make your calling and election sure. For if you do these things, you shall never fall. Study to show yourself approved. All right? To be approved of the Lord, we got to study. We got to give diligence. We got to give our all. Be the light of this world. Verse 9, it says, Then shall they be in pitiful case, which now have abused my ways, and they that have cast them away despitefully shall dwell in torments. So if you don't get right, you're going to dwell in torments. You're going to be in a pitiful case. But if you do get right, 
If you do order your conversation right, you can be preserved from these things. Verse 10, it says uh, uh, in Deuteronomy, the Lord said, I set before you life and death, a blessing and a curse. Which one are you going to choose? All right. Verse 10, it says, for such as in their life have received benefits and have not known me and they have loathed my law while they had yet liberty and as and when as yet place of repentance was open onto them, understood not, but despised it. They look they look little. There's people that walk past the camp and they look at us. They look down on us. They think little of us. When really, that's the doors of repentance right there. That's the altar. That's where you come and make your sacrifice. All right, that's what we was reading. The Lord don't want sacrifices for bullocks or calves, all that. He already has all that. He said, if I was hungry, I wouldn't even tell y'all. He said, offer unto me thanksgiving. Pay unto me your vows. And we read Psalms 51. It says, the, 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 uh, the sacrifice of the Lord is a contrite and a broken spirit. That's what the Lord is asking asking from us, man. He's not asking much. Yahweh Shai said, my burden is light. Okay? It says, and... It says, uh, and they that have loathed my law while they had yet liberty and when as yet place of repentance was open unto them, understood not, but despised it. The same must know it after death by pain. Right, a lot of death and a lot of pain is going to come to the earth, to the rebellion, to the rebellious ones of Israel. All right. And of course, the rest of these heathens. Verse 13, it says, and therefore be thou not curious how the ungodly shall be punished and when, but inquire how the righteous shall be saved, whose the world is and for whom the world is created. So this world was created for the righteous. All right. This world was created for the nation of Israel, starting with the elect. All right. The meek shall inherit the earth. Verse 14, it says, then entered I and said, I have said before and now do speak and will speak it also hereafter that there be many more of them which perish. Why? Because broad is the way uh, uh, that leadeth to destruction and many there be that go in there. At, but narrow is the way that leadeth to salvation, that leadeth to everlasting life and few there be that find it. And we have found that way. So don't forsake it. All right. We keep walking this path and enduring. We're going to find everlasting life at the end of this tunnel, at the end of this path. It says, I have said before and now do speak and will speak it also hereafter that there be many more of them which perish than of them that shall be saved. Like as a wave is greater than a drop. So that's the difference. All right. That's the that's the uh, comparison. All right. It's going to be a lot more people that die than of them that be saved. Having that said, Lord willing, that was edifying. I want to give all praises to Yahweh, Ba'asham, Yahweh Shai, Ba'asham, Kakwadash. Yahweh was the true, holy, powerful, and mighty name of the Heavenly Father. And Yahweh Shai was the true, holy, powerful, and mighty. Yahweh Shai is the true, holy, powerful, and mighty name of His only begotten Son, our Lord and our Savior. Kakwadash is the Holy Spirit that speaks through us, that allows us to rightly divide the word of truth and teach the word correctly and directly. Give double honors to the elders of Israel, being the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone that rule well. Shalom, which is peace and love to the elect of Israel. Shalom, Akim, brother, keep on pushing. Stay faithful. All right. Uh, be not weary in well doing, because in due season we shall reap if we faint not. Salvation draweth nigh. Redemption is nearer than we believe. Shalom.